Welcome back to NBA.com's Fantasy Insider. Dwight Howard and Ryan Anderson fill in jam session with love. This is, after all, their town. And this is your show, Fantasy Freaks. Rick Kamla back with you, taking inventory of the NBA as we look forward to the second half with ballers and ballers. Let's start with the second half ballers, and let's run them out right now. You're going to see Jamal Crawford on this list. We're going to get to him in just a second. Brooke Lopez as well. Marshawn Brooks, I am real bullish on him looking forward. In 16 starts this year, he's 16 points, 5 rebounds, 1.1 steals, 1.5 threes, and he's shooting 44 from the field and 75 from the line in almost 36 minutes. Look for that to continue. Steven Jackson recently told the New York Daily News, quote, I'm at the stage of my career where I want to be in a different situation, end quote. Look for him to be traded. He'll have bigger numbers with his new team. And Ramon Sessions, there are a lot of reports out there saying that the Lakers are going to accelerate their pursuit of the Cleveland Cavaliers backup point guard after the All-Star break. If he goes to LAL, look out for those numbers. Let's talk more about Jamal Crawford. I see a big second half from Jamal. He got inserted into the starting lineup by uh, Nate McMillan at the point guard position with Raymond Felton being demoted. That happened right before the All-Star break. In that first game, he had a perfect first half. He went for 20 points, 8 assists. He was 5 of 7 from three-point range. And I look for a big second half for, from, from Jamal Crawford. He loves the area. He likes his new team. And uh, really, they need his scoring punch. And they need his excitement and his, his dynamic play. Uh, and I think he's going to have a fantastic second half with Portland. Now, Brooke Lopez, let's talk about him. Made his season debut on February 19th. Missed the, the beginning, like the first two months of the season following foot surgery. Now, his last game before the All-Star break, he had 15 points in 28 minutes, and he took 16 shots in that game. I think that's a pretty good sign. The last two years, Brooke Lopez has been good. I know last year that the rebounding was weird, but dig it. Last year, he was 20.4 points per game. Yeah, the rebounds were down. He called himself a lazy rebounder. I think we'd all be happy if he got the rebounds to eight. I wouldn't bank on that, but I would bank on a big second half from Brooke Lopez. Lopez. He's going to give you about like 18 and 7, about a block and a half per game. He's going to be a very, very solid and viable player in fantasy basketball. So those are your second half ballers. Now, time for the second half ballers. Darren Collison. I mean, he didn't even take off without George Hill. So now that George Hill is back and A.J. Price is coming out a little bit, just not feeling Collison in terms of his numbers in the second half. I think in reality, he'll be good for Indiana, just not that good in fantasy. Jeff Teague, where are the assists, my man? Okay, in February, Teague is going 11 points, 2.8 assists. What is that? He's a point guard. 1.1 steals, 1.13, shooting 42% in only 28 minutes. Heinrich is there. I don't like Teague's situation in the second half. And with Tim Duncan, beware of the Greg Popovich killjoy DNPs. I'm just going to leave it at that. Now, let's talk more about DeAndre Jordan. I'm a big fan of this guy. However, his numbers are drooping, you all. Kenyon Martin is there. Reggie Evans is there. And DeAndre Jordan's numbers are down. Scoring has gone from 8.7 in December to 8.3 in January, down to 7.4 in February. The rebounding has stayed pretty consistent. 9.4 in Jan, 9.2 in Feb. The blocks have gone like that. 4.7 in December, 2.7 in January, 1.9 in February. And the minutes have gone 31.5 in January to 26.2 in February. DeAndre Jordan's going to be a big-time player for the Los Angeles Clippers. But in fantasy, don't look for the numbers that DeAndre was giving us in the first month. I think you're going to get like seven points, eight, nine rebounds, in between one and a half to two blocks per game. Still a usable, viable guy, just not the monster he was coming out of the gates at the beginning of the season. Those numbers I don't think will be there as long as Kenny Martin and Reggie Evans stay healthy. And let's talk about Brandon Jennings. I got a bone to pick with Brandon Jennings. Is he checking out on the Bucks? I mean, you guys heard that quote, right? He told ESPN, quote, I'm doing my homework on big market teams. Shouldn't you be doing your homework on the scouting report? He went on to say, I'm not saying I won't, and I'm not saying I will, in terms of extending with the Milwaukee Bucks. Brandon, I like you, man. I love your game. Why are you saying this now? I just don't get this, man. That report came out on February 10th, or thereabouts. February 11th against Orlando, Jennings went 3 for 14. The next few games, he went 4 for 10, 7 of 21, 4 for 20, 6 for 15. 
That's not going the right way, y'all. Now, the last two games before the All-Star break, Jennings was pretty good. But when you're talking about another team or big market teams or the possibility of leaving, not coming back, is your mind really in the right place for the second half? I don't know. I hope he has big numbers. I just don't think you, as fantasy owners, can count on it. We are coming back with more on NBA.com Fantasy Insider from Jam Session in Orlando.